So maintaining optimal oxygen saturation, the key to reduce both severe ROP and neuro, okay, disability. Presenter author is Das. Good morning. History has suggested that restricted use of oxygen in preterm infants can lead to high mortality and disability, whereas liberal use can link to ROP. With the upgradation of our hospital NICU, the number of patients presented with severe ROP has increased. So this prompted us to review our oxygen therapy as a contributing factor. The purpose of this study is to develop some strategies to maintain optimal oxygen saturation in the babies. So using a structured quality improvement method that is plan, do, check, and act cycle, we first reviewed the problem, then we tried to find out our fault, then we develop a protocol and tracking tool, then we educate our staff, and last we gathered information to check the efficacy of our strategies. 80 preterm infants in 2022 admitted to our hospital NICU was reviewed retrospectively. Out of them, 16 developed ROP. Among them, five required intrafetal injection and laser therapy, and two become blind despite of treatment. Then we carried out as our staff evaluation, and we found that most of the staff were unaware that high oxygen concentration and ROP is interrelated. They are not properly oriented to the guideline for titrating FiO2. FiO2 is the fraction of inspired oxygen. When a person breathes in the room air, his FiO2 is 21% as the atmospheric uh, oxygen content is 21%. But when he takes oxygen from nasal prong, marks, ventilation, his oxygen content FiO2 increases. So when there is low FiO2, our nurses aggressively increase the oxygen supply. This FiO2 should be increased 5 to 10 percent at a time, but due to the aggressive oxygen supply, they, there occurs rebound hyperoxia. So this alternating cycle of hypoxia and hyperoxia can cause damage to the vascular tone in the premature limit. We also found that the SpO2 target limit in them, in the monitor, was not set properly. The higher limit was set at 98 percent, which is more than which expected in the newborn. And weaning of newborn to lower FiO2 was not done properly due to heavy workload or forgetfulness. So we found that lack of appropriate knowledge and lack of guideline was the main issue to address. So we developed some strategies to tackle this issue. We prepared the SpO2 target trend charts according to Stanson BJ, and we placed this chart in each patient clipboard as a visual reminder. And this chart shows that uh, we also adjusted the alarm limit. We brought back the higher alarm limit from 98 to 95%. We also monitored SPO2 trend alarm limit, and we did regular audit so that patients are complying to it. So we undertook education of our all new and existing staff, and we also taught them how to win off or how to boost oxygen support. Then in the year of 2023, we gathered information to check the efficacy. We saw that the decrease in the incidence of ROP, and there is no subsequent rise in mortality. So Sawet also shows that maintaining oxygen saturation among 85 to 93 percent can decrease the rate of ROP. For that also shows that trepidating attack of hypoxia and hyperoxia can damage the vascular tone in immature babies. Eucherich showed that variation of blood oxygen tension can predict ROP. So in conclusion, severe ROP can be prevented only with maintaining simple some improvement in the clinical practice, but it needs strong commitment from the doctors and staff. And as an ophthalmologist, we are always giving stress on the ROP screening. But screening can only do early diagnosis and treatment. Screening cannot prevent ROP. So hope this study will show some light on ROP prevention by maintaining ultimate optimal oxygen saturation in newborn baby. Thank you.